Hey, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen. I hope you're doing well today. I am uh, running a little behind. Ah! Um, <laughs> today is the last day for the last clue on the stitch along, uh, but it's going to continue, obviously, while everyone's still stitching everything together. So whether you have just started clue one or you're just finishing and you're starting on clue six, uh, congratulations for starting. Starting, and you can all enter in to win and the giveaway so as long as you've got at least one clue completed you can totally enter that giveaway before the final cutoff date so every clue that you finish is a, an entry if you're watching this on replay on Facebook thank you and welcome and also thank you so much if you are on YouTube I understand there are some youtubers who don't use Facebook at all and therefore cannot uh, enter to win I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the page you can uh, see on, um, I thought that you could see uh, publicly on Facebook, but of course you do have to have a, um, a profile uh, in order to um, submit your photos. So I'm not sure how we'll do that in the future if we, um, if we want to do it that way. So I've heard some, uh, some, <laughs> some people give me some, some information, some feedback on that. So uh, anyway, but I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining me today. The clue is up if you're using needles. Uh, there is also some written notes for loom knitters. Yay! And if you're a loom knitter, you're going to notice that you can start doing this. You're like, I can do this on other things. So if you've gotten that far, you're going to go, oh my gosh, I can add a border to my panel and not worry about it. So if you had had a... Um, if you had a stockinette uh, panel that you had made and you're like, it's curling and I need to add a border, you can totally use this um, and you can tweak it too. So good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here. Let's scrolling along and see, whoops, I'm making everything shake. <laughs> oh, let's see. Hello, hello. Hi, Susan and Robin. Hi, Heather and Lexi. Hey, Elizabeth and Shirley. Hi. And what is going on? It is, hey, Karen, Elizabeth, another Elizabeth. <laughs> Hi, Joanne, how are you? And Liz, Carol, hey, 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 and Linda, I see you jumped on. Thank you for the clue number six uh, link there. Both the giveaway clue and the um, clue number six are also in the show notes or description of this video, and so you can see that. Uh, it is uh, it is a good morning here. Hey, Eva, I see you hopped on. Uh, welcome. I uh, have the clue uh, here on my uh, iPad, and I am um, I'm trying to scroll along. I'm on. For, I don't know why I'm on clue number five. So I got to get. I've got to change this so I can have my notes up. So pardon me while I look down for a second. I was having to remind myself about a couple things before I jumped on. I realized what time it was. I ran out of time. So, <laughs> good morning. And you'll ha be happy to know that uh, Kristen, even though her voice is still a little iffy, I brought my coffee. So, hold on. Mm. Okay. So, I've got my loom, and I'm, I can do the last clue demo. Now, there are some options for this clue uh, if you're a loom knitter. If you're a needle knitter, the video is in the, um, it's, it's embedded, it's, it's inside the, the, um, the website. It's also on YouTube. It's also on the Burnett Blanket Stitch Along page. So you can get it at any of those places. But for loom knitters, it's only here. <laughs> and then later on, it will be uh, on, our, on the bottom of our, our notes where it's all written out on the blog. So you're really going to want the blog if you're a loom knitter. And then that way you've got that written out and you can uh, follow along. So, um, yeah. And then we will put this up on uh, YouTube later on. So, um, oh, Liz says I made it this morning. I was up watching it on YouTube at 4 a.m. Liz, did you finish? Did you finish your loom blanket? Or your are you doing needles? What did you finish? Oh, my goodness. I mean, we, you didn't say finished. <laughs> but you made it this morning. Oh, my gosh. I'm thinking you did it. Hey, Gail. Hey, good morning. I see you jumping on. Hey, April. Um... Wow, Liz, I'm like anticipating. I'm like, did you really get up at 4 a.m. and like, <laughs> like complete this? I'm like, 
That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So be sure and finish your clues. Um, put them up on the um, Good Knit Kisses page. Also, go um, add your picture over to the Burnett Blink and Stitch Along page. I'm not preventing you from doing that. I would love for you to add your picture there with the hashtag Hand Made with Joanne. Uh, and good knit kisses. That's fantastic. Uh, but in order to enter the giveaway, be sure and also add it on the good knit kisses page. And so we can count it and it just needs to be a complete clue. I will say that, um, some, uh, there have been some people say I'm doing the connection a little different. And so I don't think that I qualify now. I disqualified myself. I wouldn't say you disqualified yourself, um, for clue five. I mean, you've already, if you've already submitted for clue one, two, three, four, then that, then that counts. I mean, if you've changed the blanket radically, then, Okay, yeah, um, we, we really, is supposed to be like <laughs> what you're supposed to be doing on those clues. But um, I think someone had actually made one of their panels like entirely different. So, yeah. <laughs> but the ones that, that are the same qualify, is that is that a good way to answer that? So, anyway, hey, Claire, I see you jumping on. Hey, Lysandra, hello, hello. Oh, Needle. Okay, so Liz is doing Needle. That's fantastic. Did you finish it already? That's so great. Um, let's see. Hey, Gail. <laughs> okay. So we've got a couple of different ones. Hi, Rosa. How are you? I am, I'm good. Um, just, uh, still got this yuck in my throat, but actually I'm feeling pretty good. So, uh, Liz says she's going to post pics after we're done. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's so awesome. I can't believe you finished. You're like, da, 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 da. way to go, Liz. <laughs> That's fast. I love it. Um, okay, so let me look at the blanket. So we've got, oh, you know what? I can now show you on camera. So hold on. Do y'all want to see my colorway? This is this is the one that I personally did. So now if you've seen the um, picture that has been posted, the really nice picture is by Yarn Inspirations. It's this one, that one. So that, sorry, it got real dark <laughs> when I put that up. That one is Yarn Inspirations, and they used for their variegated, they used to, no, no, it's no. I'm trying to remember what the variegated color is. But the variegated is uh, the color Contrast B. And my Contrast B, I used light teals. Other than that, I did the same thing. I love how this turned out. Look at this. This is my blanket. Isn't that nice? I love, I love it. It's, um, my son is like, can I use it yet? And I'm like, no, you can't use it just yet. So I've been holding it in my office, like, don't touch it. <laughs> so this is it. And this was made on the needles. And of course you can do it on the loom as well. And, um, so what, what clue number six is, oh good. Oh, look at all the hearts. Thank you. Um, yeah, I really love how dynamic the, the teal looks on there. I can't wait to see all of y'all's. I've seen people with the um, some reds and some cool blues. And, like, uh, when you get the borders on there, it just kind of just brings it all together. So I can't wait to see it. Um, so we're adding this border in here. Now, there's two options on the loom. When we last met last week... We were taking for the loom, you don't hang on the back on the edge because you need a giant loom. But we started, this is just a small sample, that we started um, connecting two at a time and doing this. What, what we're going to do now is we're going to um, go to the side now and only connect on one side. Okay, so you would pick up this stitch now that you've connected them. So you have to make sure and have them all connected. You start picking up the stitches as you go and create something like this, but it's only connecting one side at a time, right? One edge. And you make an order of, let me scroll. This is the order. Do, 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 do. I'm sorry. So you do the bottom edge, which is right here. Of course, you want to uh, weave in all your tails first. You're going to do the bottom edge, and then you do the top edge and then you do the sides and so when you do the bottom edge um, you've got that extra length that you add on uh, to that so it actually makes it it makes it a little longer this way so when you turn it so you do the top and the bottom so that adds on to that dimension and then when you turn it and you hang the panel and you start adding again um, now you're picking up the first set of stitches you're picking up is from part of that border that you just added so that's why 
you have to do it in the order that's laid out. It's in the blog, but it's also in the pattern as well for needles. But in but loom knitting, you you really need to look at that blog. So um, that's the way you do it. Now there's a second option. You can um, start on the bottom edge and work your way down and then you can do something like if you've if you've ever done and it ha raise your hand if you've ever done the five stitch blanket that I've done or the 10 stitch blanket and I've got a video on the zippy loom you're you're gonna like this if, if you've done that before you're gonna be very familiar and Joanne has it all laid out thank you so much to Joanne and so she's got it to where once you get that bottom uh, edge done over everything then you start making a corner so you make the part one of the corner and part two of the corner she's got it laid out like as one whole thing but you're basically you um, so let's see we get to the end we get we get to the end of this and then the first part of that um, of that keeps keeps this pivot point where you start wrapping and turning and it makes it turn like this and make a mitered edge and then it turns it again making that finishing out that mitered edge and makes a corner right here boop and then you start joining as you did before okay it, with a tweak I'll, I'll tell oh, there's a caveat in this and then <laughs> and then you make another corner and then you continue make another corner and continue and then by the time you get down to the next corner I'm doing kind of an overview first before we get into it um, and then you get her all the way around to the other corner make that corner and then let me scroll down and say so we continue uh, joining along each section and the corner section at each corner then you end with the final corner section and work a purl bind off after row 15 um, so it's like right at the end of the last corner instead of working row 16 which is her corner is written from um, row 1 through 16 you just stop that that last corner the fourth corner short and then do a purl bind off all it is if you don't know what a purl bind off is and you're used to doing like a basic bind off instead of e wrapping or u knitting when you when you bind off you actually make it as a purl stitch every time and then when you move that stitch over yes you lift up and over when you're combining the two stitches uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look at the basic bind off video for loom knitting whenever I've done them. And um, I, I normally just e wrap and then work a peg, uh, but you would purl it instead. Um, okay, so that's it. And then you um, sew it together. So you have like a long enough tail and then you sew those to that little gap together. That's it. Uh, and then weave in your one tail from the end and weave in your tail from the beginning, which they're actually right there next to each other <laughs> and then you're complete on the blanket is that a good overview for y'all does that help okay so the other what I say the caveat is um, the bottom edge okay this bottom edge section tooped at the bottom here and when you get on the top side it's a little different than from the sides the vertical part so let me go to that there is okay so the join section is you um if you followed us last week we slip um a, a, instead of a, we we slip the first stitch and um instead of, uh, so instead of joining we're slipping uh, the first stitch and then so the outside outermost edge instead of joining to another panel you're just slipping it like so you don't work that stitch and you work the next one knit two and then you join one so you've done that last week where you join one and then you work your way back with the purl uh so it's not a knit in the middle this time you work way back purl three and then you knit one and so that end stitch either gets slipped or it gets knit okay every other row and then you work your way back so it's like a four row repeat and then on the fifth row which is a restart of row one that uh, that starts again and that join section written with four rows is the um, the right and left edges but for the top and bottom edges you actually just work row one and two so um, you actually you join every other row on the bottom and the top um, just like we did last week but on the side edges you actually only need to join um, like every four rows so uh, she's got it all written out and uh, let me scroll through and see if there was a quick question before I start trying to do any of this I'm not gonna let's see hang on oh sorry 
Oh, Liz says, I got, I had so much fun in this project after I got caught up last week. You do, <laughs> yes, your kitten got a hold of it and ripped out the first one. I know that was so crazy, Liz. Hopefully your kitty is behaving now. <laughs> Uh, Elizabeth says I was going to start, but my grandson asked for a snuggie, snuggly, so that had to come first. Oh, yeah, grandsons get dibs. Um, <laughs> and then we have, oh, and then she says I'm going to make at least one panel so I can get in the contest. Yeah, absolutely, get in that contest. Hey, Carol, I see you jumped in. in. Okay, um, Carol, Joanne says the top and bottom are the edges along the tweed sections. Yes. Um... The sides of clue three or four, the right and left are the long edges that include all the clues. Oh. Well, she, Joanne is clarifying, so let me just back up for a second. Top and bottom edges are the tweed sections. Okay, so it's just opposite of what I said. Um, I wouldn't have worded it that way, um, only because the the blank is technically like this. So I just confused y'all and I confused myself. So technically, the top of the blanket is here, but she's calling it. So we've got it worded on the blog this way. So we probably are going to have, we'll probably need to add that in just to make sure. So, um, the, 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 um, clue, the sides of clues three and four are going to need, uh, uh, what did she say? I'm going to further confuse myself. Okay. The top edge is shaker tweed clue four. And so that one is um, repeat rows one through two to the end of the panel. Okay, so this one, um, it's a it's going to be a vertical just like this. So it will match this. So this is going to look just like this because we connected every other row. So, okay, that makes sense. So what this middle section looks like, it's still going to look this way and you're going to join it how you did before. But when you get to the when you get to the part that combines everything else, that's where she's saying it's joined every other uh, four rows. That makes sense because um, it's a really long, <laughs> it's a really long section, but it worked out really well. She sent me the pictures of what it's looking like for hers. She's doing hers on a smaller uh, scale uh, loom. She's got a smaller, I think hers is um, a small gauge, if I remember. And then um, we're doing ours on the large to match because she's using a different yarn. So thank you for clarifying that, Joanne. I got myself all confused. Whew. All right. So let's get this rid of her so I can show y'all. Uh, so technically then, because I showed you last week, you, you kind of know how to connect every other um, row. So instead of when you work your way back, you're not using that knit stitch in the middle. So if you can check out the week before, and then I'll work the four row repeat on here. Does that sound good to y'all? Do y'all give me a thumbs up if that's okay. If we just do the four row repeat on this video, and then you know how to do it. Um, you should be able to do the, the two, the two row repeat, um, for that. So, okay. Yeah. She's making it on the small gauge loom. Okay, she's just popping that up. All right. So, I'm trying to think how I want to hang this on here. And I need another color. One second. Let me get this teal color here to make my edge. And you could pick another color for your edge, I suppose. I just want to make it to where you can really see it. Okay. Do, 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 do. Getting my stuff ready. <laughs> okay. All right. Y'all don't want to see my face doing this. By the way, while we wait on this, I have another, I have a video that just came out this weekend. Woo, 
the alternate rib stitch hat. So if you didn't see it, um, be sure and check out the uh, YouTube channel. So uh, KB Looms uh, had us do that. And uh, I didn't show these double knit hooks on the video, but that I used that. And boy, it made that work fly. Let me just tell you. That was really cool. I hadn't, hadn't really had to use them much in projects just yet, um, but that was a really great opportunity. So, all right, I'm going to flip this um, right here, and we'll start. Let me get my tripod to work for me, and it's not behaving. Okay. So we need to cast on four stitches and I'm going to join, um, I'm going to join on this side and I want to work I'm going to cast on to where um, when I work my corner, uh, I'm going to do it this way so that you can work in either direction, by the way. Um, the uh, man, I don't think there's enough light here. Y'all getting enough light in here? Um, I'm going to do I'm going to do it this way because um, if you go look at my five stitch video and you want to use the corner, you'll see that working the corner, um, I believe the corner comes on this side. And so we'll do the wrap and turn. Let's see. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, Joanne, Joanne, you're doing yours with it on the left. So uh, anyway, I'm just trying to figure out if I'm gonna I'm starting it on the correct side. All right, so I'm gonna do four stitches. Double E wrap cast on here. Casting on and wrapping each stitch twice. Oh no, I'm doing it in the wrong direction. Join one on this side. All right, pardon me. All right. So I'm going to cast on left to right. Double E wrap. This is live. <laughs> if you're watching the replay, just remember I'm doing this live. So. Okay. All right, so cast it on the four stitches. We are starting the join section and we're gonna work rows one through four. We're gonna slip this first stitch, which is just ignoring it. And then we're gonna knit two stitches and I'm still U wrapping. So just go wrap around the front of that stitch and knit. And then we're going to join where we, um, I don't think we have join written. Let me see, pick up the pearl bump, which this one's not a pearl bump on here. So we're just picking up a bump. Okay, we pick up a bump and then we, um, and then we're knitting it, right? And then we're moving this over. And then we're wrapping and knitting over both loops um, on the peg. So we're gonna knit and put those two together to join. So we're not purling to join this week. And then uh, we are going to um, move on to the second row, which is 
purl three and uh, knit one. So I'm gonna go back on this one. I'm going to purl one, two, three, and then knit one. And then we're slipping one, and then we're gonna knit three. This is row three. One, two, three. And then we're going to purl three. This is row four, purl one, two, three, and then four. Okay, so that is the end of row four, and I'm back on the right side, of or right, right edge of um, this, and I'm ready to start row one again. And so you just start it by slipping that first stitch, and then we knit two, one, two and then we join again so as long as Joanne doesn't tell me I've joined it different than she's joined it because I believe that's I'm doing this correctly <laughs> it's live people so I'm gonna come over here and grab this uh, edge stitch here making sure I'm grabbing the right one and we're just gonna put this place it so I'm gonna pick it and place it and then Going to knit that stitch. All right, and then I'm going to move it over. So, because basically, when I pick it up, I'm just I'm creating the ability to have a nice flexible stitch to join it. Okay, and then I place it on this peg here, this first peg, and then I'm going to knit these together. All right, and now they're joined. And then um, that's the ending of row one. Now, when I go back, yes, I'm gonna work this peg again, and I'm going to purl. So we are purl three, and Joanna's confirming, you're spot on, woohoo! <laughs> She's been working on this over the weekend, so this is like something that we've been doing like pretty much like as it happens. So <laughs> kudos to Joanne. She's been following this all along and she's just basically a step ahead of y'all. Like just a step ahead. It's really awesome. She's amazing. So we're going to, we're doing this row. We're on row two, purl three and knit one. Again, now you work back two more rows and you don't join. So, um, we are, um, as far as this goes, uh, we, we're joining, <clears throat> you're going to follow this up whenever you do join, you've got to pull, um, like as it, as it happens, like, uh, make sure that these are nice and even and go, okay, which one should I grab? You're not trying to get it right next to that. So we're going to do two more rows before we join. I'm going to do it one more time and show you how I'm going to skip up here. All right. So I've got two more rows. We're slipping one. We're knitting three, one, two, three. And that's adding that extra row on here. And then we've got one more row, so we're purling. One, two, three. And then we knit. And now we're ready for another join. Let's do it again. All right, and then we're going to slip that one stitch and then we knit one, two. All right, here comes that join. So now that we've knit a little bit of length and you can see it a little bit more, um, we're going to go like this and I'm gonna see that it's about right here. So I'm gonna take one of these stitches here Yeah, that's a good one. I'm gonna take that one, 
and I'm going to knit it to pick it up. That's just picking up a stitch. And then we're just moving it, and that picked up stitch is now knit together with this one. So it's not acting and adding an extra row or anything. It's just a matter of trying to grab all the right stitches together and then not having the other color in here. All right, and then now we work the row by purling. So now we're on per we're on the third row. I'm sorry, no, we're on row two, purl. It's only four stitches. And then that edge stitch is always going to be knit on your way back, and then it skipped or slipped on the next row. So you just knit, 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 and then purl, purl, purl. That's it. Now when you get to the end of this row, you take this entire time to go across all the edges, okay? So you, you work your way all the way up, and let me flip this so you can see it. This is what this looks like. Isn't that cool? So this is what your edge looks like, and then it um, it starts, pull, see it pulls it together like this, and you go, you go all the way up here, all the way up this side here, and then when you get to the end, you stop right here, and then you hop down to, if you want to continuous join, it, you can turn it, and then turn it. So you turn it and work up like an, a diagonal. So you'll go, you'll be at the edge here. And then you work, 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 work to make a diagonal here, like that. And then what we do is, now you're working in another uh, another part of the corner, and it does this other diagonal. I'm just using these uh, yarn, this yarn to demonstrate. It's like my chalkboard. <laughs> yarn is a chalkboard. Would you pay more attention in school? Um, <laughs> so you're making like a part one of a corner, and then a part two of a corner, and then it gets you back over here to where you start joining here. So this is the option for join as you go. If not, if you're not using the join as you go, then you're just making uh, this edge until you get all the way um, to the end. So anyway, so you work you work these um, sides first. Okay, the side of your clue four and the side of your uh, clue five. I mean, uh, you could clue three. So here's clue three. So you work these here, okay? And then you work the side of this one, okay? And then you join at the, at this part and then this part, right? And that's if you're doing it side, 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 okay? But if you want to join as you go, then you just keep going, baby. Go, baby, go. <laughs> so, go, Speed Loomer. <laughs> go, go, Speed. <laughs> Y'all remember that in show? <laughs> Uh, so, if you want more um, help on that to get an idea of what she's talking about when she works on, so right here, this is the pattern. This is what I've been referring to off to the side. Okay, so let me show you from the beginning. This is the uh, Stitch Along Clue 6 blog. It starts off looking like this. We talk about the needle stuff a little bit here and some overview. Here's the needle video. And then now here, notes for loomers. And then this is where you need um, you need to pay attention here. And then that's this is the um, abbreviated um, part about the join. Okay, last week we purled as we went, and so you've got a slight change here. And then option one, work the join on each edge, separ edge as separately. That's what I'm talking about redoing it four different times. You'll have four different bind off um, for those stitches, and then uh, sew in your um, or weave in your your uh, tails. And then um, you work that. And then here, option two, work a continuous join with short road corners. This is where um, it looks like the 10 stitch. Or go look at my, my five stitch blanket. So this you're only working with four stitches. So if you look at the five stitch blanket, that'll really help you. But this is how she's got it written out. So pay close attention to how it's written here. But if you want to see how I'm wrapping, then you can go to that. So you slip the first stitch. You know how to do that now. 
you join, blah, blah, blah. So you do all that like you're supposed to do, okay? And then this is what I'm saying on the top and bottom edges, uh, which is the ones for clue four and three, you're gonna repeat rows one through two only on those. But on that other edge, the right and left edges is what we're calling where all of them are coming together. You do the repeat like I just showed you. Then you go on when you get to the end, if you're going to continue, you get to the end of that uh, first um, uh, section and then you do, um, you do uh, the corner section where you do a row three, slip one, knit two, and then you do a wrap and turn. So um, the uh, wrap and turn is where you lift up the, um, you lift up the peg and then you, um, then you wrap around the peg and then put that peg, uh, that you put that loop back down and then you work the next stitch. So you work a knit two, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, then you work back um, on row four and you ignore wherever you just wrapped and so it gets shorter so if you count here on row three it shows it's four four pegs one two three four and then after you've wrapped and you go on to row four you purl two and knit one well that's only three pegs right and then you get to row five and then you slip one knit one wrap that's still only working three pegs, right? Now we're ignoring that wrap peg and we get to row six and we only work two pegs, purl one, knit one. Now we get to row seven and we slip one, pearl, uh, wrap one. So we're wrapping that last stitch here. And then row eight, we only have one peg to work with, so we knit it. And then row, row nine, we slip that peg we just knit and then we wrap again. Yeah, so there's like two wraps on this one. I'm just going to verbally walk y'all through it. And then it, uh, knit one uh, on row 10. So you knit this edge stitch, okay? And then row 11, you increase again. So this one where it says W1, you now have two wraps on there. So you're doing it again where you lift the, the stitches off or stitch off and then you put one on. And then you purl and then you knit and then you keep working to where everything finally ends up getting... Um, two wraps on them that had the wraps and turns. Okay, so now by the time I get to row 15, I'm back to four stitches here. And when I'm knitting them, I'm knitting two over one. I'm, uh, if I've got, or three over one, if I've got um, multiple wraps on there, when I, by the time I get down here, I'm, I'm knitting them all over. So, oh, okay, you don't have to list it. Okay, Joanne has done it now where you don't have to wrap and turn. So you can just wrap it and then move on. You don't have to lift it up. So she's confirming that's actually easier. So she's tested it that way. I normally lift them up and over. So she's just wrapping it. Yay, that'll work. And then you just keep moving on. So um, even though it doesn't say down here after the, the wrap one, you're adding the wrap, but whenever you get to the knitting, um, when you get back on that peg that had extra wraps, you're just gonna work that entire, uh, all the all the loops that are on the peg. And then you just continue uh, working them uh, in each corner. And then what I was talking about earlier, when you get to that final corner section, the fourth one, you stop at row 15. You don't do row 16. And then this row, see how it's purl three? Oops. See how it was already going to be a purl row? It's purl three, knit one. So in order to purl bind off, you purl the first two stitches, and then you move the purl stitch, the second purl stitch, onto the first purl stitch, lift up and over, and then move it over onto that empty peg, and then continue that way. So it's a purl bind off instead of a E-wrap or unit bind off. And then um, you, you finish that up. You work a purl bind off row. After row 15, leave a yarn tail long enough to join and bind off your um, your edges together and um, and weave in your tails. And that is, that is it. <laughs> so um, I hope that has helped. Um, I had a bit of a, a fub. Oops. Oh, hang on. I just saw my neck. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> um, that is... I. I that is us working that together. Sorry, I'm trying to fix this. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm trying to fix my camera. Uh, that is us working feverishly over the weekend. Really, it's, it's all Joanne. 
and I had to um, kind of interpret some of that really quickly. So it's not Joanne, it's me. <laughs> so anyway, um, with only four stitches at the corner, you can't see a visible difference if you lift the stitch before wrapping it or not is what Joanne is saying. So she's all about the shortcut. So because you can't tell and it's so small, then don't worry about lifting it, <laughs> lifting the stitch, do it, doing one of those wrap and turns where you lift it and then wrap it and then put it back down, which is what I was saying, because that's normally how I do it. But she's assuring me, um, and she's very meticulous about things looking nice, so I believe her. <laughs> so it's really good. Uh, yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, let us know if you have any other questions. Um, Joanne and I will um, try and get to those uh, as soon as possible. Um, if you're watching this well beyond um, the fall season here in 2017, I'm not sure if we'll be able to respond to that, but you can also um, go check. The best way would be if you have any questions to go on the blog and leave questions there. And in fact, if you guys will, if, if you have a question about a pattern or something that we've done a video on that you can find the, um, when you go to goodknitkisses.com and you go to that search bar, um, type in the thing that you're looking for and find it. And if you will like comment on the blog there, it'll be much easier to find the answer. <laughs> so um, yeah. Because uh, these videos kind of get, uh, some of the, the comments and stuff can get lost in the shuffle. So if you need help, be sure and go to our website. Uh, that should help. And you probably will find the answer there. Because uh, we will update the website if there was is if there's something significant that a lot of people have asked. Um, we'll just put it in the notes. So, hey Angel, I see you jumping on. Uh, Robin says, so excited you have some of your own designs and your inspirations. Love the cute jar mug hugs. Thank you, Robin. Uh, yeah, that, that was really fun to do. Um, if you guys didn't see it, um, I'll get them over here and I need to get it, um, written up for the loom. Uh, but we have these, uh, jar hugs that I did and, um, I have the mug hugs, uh, that I've got to make new ones cause they still have, they have my, my other ones in Canada. <laughs> they shot the pictures, but I made these second ones here. So, this is the peppermint jar hug, and on the peppermint jar hug pattern, there is a pattern for a smaller version that's the same size as like a Starbucks like cuff, you know, those cardboard ones that go over your drink. Um, this is made with, um, this is the Holiday Cheer, I don't want to get the name wrong, but this is the um, Bernat Holidays um, cotton yarn, and it has a sparkle. Do you see the sparkle there? So, um, anyway, it has a sparkle and then this is the zigzag one. You can do it in any color. I mean, really, this would be fun any time of year. And look at that. I think it looks kind of like a heartbeat. You could give uh, a diabetic a, a really good candy there. <laughs> Get some sugar-free candies and be like, not a diabetic. It, you know, it would be good for diabetics. <laughs> you can give heart healthy conscious candies for someone. <laughs> That's what I meant. That came out really weird. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, they're really cute little cuffs. And then you, um, we call them a mug hug. They're cozy, whatever. Um, this is the little button. And then if you need to make it an adaption for an actual mug with a, um, with a handle on it, you could ch make a change. I just sewn the buttons on the cast on edge. And then this edge is where the bind off is. And so you could just do it like that and have one up here, you know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and you just make it to the length that you need for your jar. Um, basically, it adds, like, on this one, it added, like, a half inch. So, um, I did it to nine inches, and then I added an extra little half inch um, to add for my bind off for the overlap. But I could have just stitched it up and put it together and just sewn it without having any buttons. But, um, anyway, yeah. So, um, uh, Liz is asking a question. Hold on. Um, Liz says, I saw your video on the double knit loom. I thought Hobby Lobby was going to carry it and they, they said they didn't know what you're talking about. Okay. So you're going to get one in Maryland. Um, okay. And then where do you get your stitch marker clips? Oh, are you talking about these clips? These Sorry, I can't really see them in the box, can you? 
these clips. So these stitch marker clips, that is a good question. I might have gotten them at Joann's. I might have gotten them at Walmart. I'm not really sure. Um, if you're asking me about the ones like these, oh, sorry. These kind that I use that look like kind of like um, clothespins. They come in a container like this. And I want to say you can get these boy ones at Joann's. This is the other kind like that. And they're just, I like these packages. They're just adorable. <laughs> you could throw all your other stitch markers in there too if you wanted to. Um, although it doesn't twist on, it's like a, it's like a loose friction fit connection. It's not anything to sneeze at. Anyway, uh, that's these clips. Uh, the loom she's talking about, if you're asking, this is the loom, and I showed it over the weekend. This is from KB Looms. Um, you can get them at kblooms.com. If you subscribe to their newsletter, from time to time they have things on sale. Um, so that's the other place I know that you can get them. To answer about Hobby Lobby, it may be online only. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at my notes. Um, if you go and look at my review, I tell you all about all about that, but I've forgotten some of that stuff because that's just in my brain and out. So I always, when I have to look for the answer, I have to look for the answer too because I'm like, I don't know, I have to go look. So I want to say it's online though. So I hope that helps, Liz. Um, do we have any other questions? Okay. Robin says, I haven't seen the double rotating loom. Um, double nut rotating loom. I thought Joann's was going to have it, but didn't see it last week. Can order through website. Yeah, for sure. You can order it through the website. I don't know if they will be in the stores at all. So ordering online is definitely, um, yeah. Well, there's some that could be in stores. I really, honestly, you got, I got to go look at my notes. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Angel says she orders everything online. You don't have a craft store there at all. I know, you know, and then there's, yeah, some people just live out where there's nothing. And then, and then I live in an area where there's just a ton, but I live in, I, I wouldn't say, well, I guess it's metropolitan. I mean, I don't live like in the city city, but I mean, I live in suburbia <laughs> and, and I live near two major cities, Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> and and I have to say, I have been, uh, I, I'm lucky to live in an area where there's lots of um, options. Um, yeah, so not bragging, that just, that's just what it is. I did find out some sad news though. A local yarn store is closing, um, Jennings Street. And I, it's really sad to hear that. Um, apparently they were trying to sell it and they just didn't have anybody willing to buy it which is sad because they've been around for quite a while. There is a new store that I really love, which is actually close, a little closer than Jennings, and I really quite love it. But um, I'm sad to hear that they are closing. So it's, um, it's sad when you hear local yarn store owners closing uh, versus big box stores. Cute containers, Angel says. <laughs> Joanne's does have those knit clips. Joanne Gay is telling us. So... Liz, is the discount code for KB Looms there? I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, go uh, be sure and subscribe to their newsletter to um, get their latest and greatest. And you'll get notifications on free patterns. You'll get notifications for um, uh, just different sales going on. They might have a run on the Zippy Looms. Um, if it doesn't apply, just delete it. Um, but if it does, I mean, sometimes they give some like 20 or 30% off, which is really fantastic. Um, maybe they'll have a shipping thing. I don't know. And now the shipping thing could be a North America thing. They do ship all over. And depending upon where you live, it the shipping may be really expensive. But, you know, it, it is what it is, unfortunately. It's, it's really nice the web can bring us all together. But unfortunately, if you buy from certain areas, it might... It might uh, just be very expensive. Um, but I think the price of the loom itself is a good price. But yeah, shipping kind of kind of kills it sometimes. Okay, yeah. You're welcome for the info, everyone. Thank you for uh, all your answers to help Liz out. And uh, yeah, 
Oh, Angel says when you sign up for Joanne online, they give you 20% right off the bat in your email. That is true. They do that. Um, there are other companies that do that as well. Um, I like that, that they do that. Uh, that is it for today. <laughs> no, Angel, I would not tell you that. It's good information. She says, tell me to shut up if I'm talking too much. Shut your mouth. No, <laughs> I would not say that. Um, <coughs> excuse me see I'm still yucky all right that is it for today be sure and look for this video um, for the um, alternate stitch hat I will give you one little tip um, that I discovered um, so a little discovery tip if you are making this hat this alternate stitch uh, rip stitch hat I made it this is my first hat hat to make on here um, the inside, because it's a reversible, it's a double knit reversible hat, the inside, because I knit over those stitches first, they're tighter, and that side of the hat actually looks more like what it's supposed to look like. So, on the outside, it's a little bit, it, it, the stitches are a little looser, and not that they're too loose, but like the inside patterning looks more like what it's supposed to look like. So, once you do your bind off, um, it um, you just flip this hat inside out. So, uh, anyway, if you're following along on that video, um, I just talk about taking it off the loom and, um, finishing it up. But I just wanted you to know if you knit over all the stitches in the inside first, then anyway, the reason why I did it though, just a little tip about that loom, the way that I was winding it, I lifted up and over to lock that last, um, yarn uh, into place and it happens to be on the inside so I was like oh I'll just knit over all the stitches that are on the inside and um, and then I knit over all the stitches on the outside so if I was doing a pattern where it's right side only like that then I, what I would need to do is I would need to um, if it wasn't reversible like that I, I would need to knit over the outside one so probably lock that one stitch in and then knit over all the stitches on the outside first so a little a little tip <laughs> for you. Uh, Charlotte says you can check the app for cell phones for coupons, both Joanne Fabrics and Hobby Lobby. Yes, and Joanne also has this like when I get discounts for Joanne's, um, I get you've got the paper one, you've got the email one, you have the app coupons, and you also can get text coupons so you can there's like a number you can ask the Joann's people or it's probably online somewhere you can text to a number and then they send you stuff in your phone so you might get four or forty percent off coupons that way that would be pretty cool that's pretty cool right <laughs> if you're in the states <laughs> I'm sorry if you can't do that anywhere else but in the states we're coupon crazy <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you so much to everyone. Thanks for um, joining along in the conversation. It's really fun. Um, so anyway, I uh, love you guys. It's, um, it's a great day. Be sure and keep an eye out for new videos coming out and get the patterns for these jar mug hugs online. And uh, we'll see you soon. Have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye, everyone.